Hello and welcome to Web Mentors YouTube channel and we are watching learning bootstrap series. So in this video we are going to see about the rest of the elements that we have left out in the form section in uh, bootstrap and uh, if you remember in the last video we have covered up to all the inline form and the horizontal form. So how to create an inline form in your contact page and then the horizontal forms in your contact page. So right now I've just used the default form so that it is easy for you to understand when I use the rest of the elements in the form. So the first thing is going to be supported controls and so the input element has to have any one of these types in order to make sure that the styling is applied for that input field properly so don't forget if you are declaring an input field in your form you use any one of these types either it is a text a password email url or telephone number number something like that so if you're not giving the type of that particular input element or input field the chances that the styling is not applied properly by the bootstrap so this is actually part of the component section in the bootstrap so we will be getting back to it after some time don't worry about it so the next is the text area we have seen that we have implemented it in the message area so they're saying the same thing the rows so we have also used the rows in this uh, text area component for six uh, we have used the kind of parameter as six in order to create a big text field text area so if you are not sure what is happening and if you think that you missed out something just go back to the last video and watch it it's small and it'll be easy for you to understand from now on so let's come on to the next section actually the rest of the elements that we have missed out so first we come back to the checkboxes and the radios we haven't used them in our contact form but when we copied the actual example form we have seen the checkboxes in it so there's two forms of checkboxes one is the normal form which can be checked and unchecked you can see that the tick mark is coming when checked and it goes off and is unchecked and the next is the disabled uh, checkbox which cannot be checked or done anything which it's going to be disabled so you can use this as course the code for that is available in here so just like each and everything you can just copy it I'm going to paste it below my message and above my submit button so that it is easy for me to actually use it so now you can see that the div is class checkbox so let's see how it actually looks you can see that it's been added at the end uh, we can change the text around and I'm just going to I accept this is a checkbox so refresh it you can see that the change has been applied so in order to check this checkbox all you have to do is to press somewhere in that area so you can see that the label is given and the input checkbox is given within the label so which means that if you click on the input box or else even on the label your checkbox will be pressed so you can give the value for it and also ID and name for it so I'm going to give checkbox contact simply uh, it's going to be a simple example so you don't have to worry about it and then uh, we have uh, radio buttons radio buttons are similar and uh, we haven't actually used this disable so if you want to disable that uh, checkbox you just have to add the class sorry in here in the div and also make sure you don't forget in adding the disables in here sorry about that uh, I have made uh, disabled when I refresh the form you can see that it is disabled and you can see that the icon changes or the pointer changes to an unclickable state now for the next radio all you have to do is that you have to change the checkbox to radio in both the areas you can see that and we have given a name and an id for it and then the value so you can also prefer if you want that radio button to be checked you can use this checked so i'm just going to copy this in order to show you how it looks in my form or in our contact form so i'm going to put it below the checkbox and refresh it and you can see that it is checked so if you remove this checked field and refresh it you can see that it's not checked you have to press it in order to check it and you can use the same disabled you can use the same disabled and when you refresh it you can see that it is not clickable so again the next thing is that you can have checkboxes in line so if you have choice based uh, questions and you want to have four choices in the same line or a row you can use this type 
all you have to do is that you have to assign checkbox inline instead of checkbox and rest of the things are the same so you have to use the checkbox inline in the label don't forget that you've used radio and checkbox in the div class but in here you have to use it for the class or for our label in here we haven't used any classes so here here we have to use the class in the label and the next is the select you might remember the normal select will be looking like this I'm just going to remove both these checkbox and radio because we have done with it so that I have enough space in my contact form of course so there is no gap because of the reason I haven't used any div so now you can see you have to you can select only one of course you can select only one value in here and uh, in order to get the value you have to press it and the drop down comes in and you can actually select a value from this but the next thing is a select a group select actually you can select multiple contents from here so when I refresh it you can see that there's multiple choices so you can select it by using either control or you can use shift in order to group select some values so this is how it is done and you can use the same disabled in order to disable this uh, just use disabled and I refresh it you can see that it is disabled and you cannot press it and again you can use the same thing for the multi select select box and I refresh it you can see that it is not clickable you cannot click it or you cannot select any values in it and then the static control this is a simple text that you can give along with the label so you can use this if you want uh, people to see actually the value but uh, it's not necessary to be submitted in a form so if you want to use uh, the value given in there we have to use uh, an input field but it has to be either disabled with the value or it has to be either made into a read-only value so the read-only will be given again in the lower part we will be coming back to it don't worry don't worry about it and then the input focus focus is nothing but you can see that there is a blue background that has been given the background or a border or a shadow that has been given to the input field and the focus is something like this so when I press the input field you can see that there is a nice styling given to that particular input field so that is what you call as a focus and uh, when I load this or refresh this page you can see that there is no input field that has been focused or selected and the disabled field set is nothing but all these elements within the field set so these are all elements that is displayed inside a field set and when you declare a field set as disabled all the elements within that field set will be disabled so you can see in here disable field set and so any element with this which has been given inside this field set will be disabled even if the disabled parameter is not used in our input field so next is the read only input and uh, I've said it before if you want a particular form element or form input field to be used when you're submitting that form but you don't want the user to edit it you can use this read only uh, option and uh, you can submit the value that has to be submitted along with the form submission so in order to do that just uh, use this uh, I can actually convert uh, already existing ones. I'm going to apply this read only to some elements let's say uh, I'm going to apply it to the name in here so read only and when I refresh it you can see that you cannot press it and you cannot enter any values so it's going to be read only you cannot edit it you cannot delete it so that's a good thing and then the validation states I will be explaining that in the next video uh, along with some jQuery you say how we can apply a validation state to a particular input field and also how to check the validation of uh, some basic stuff like text and uh, how whether the input field is empty or not and uh, if it is a number or a text like that so that's the end of this video i hope it is useful if you find this video useful please like this video share this video and also please subscribe to the channel there are a lot of videos coming right now and we are doing it at very fast pace and uh, you can expect a lot of videos getting uploaded to the channel so subscribe to the channel and if you have any kind of doubts issues or problems or if you have any questions to ask please use the comment section of this video in order to ask us the question we will answer you as soon as possible and also if you have any kind of feedback or suggestions or something that you want us to improve or do in order to make things easy for you please let us know we'll be listening and we will do it 
properly. And thank you for watching this video and have a great day.